Hey Fight fans, I'm Sarah Davis and you're watching Fight News Now Extra. Don't miss all the latest news from the MMA world. Next, where a fighter is slapped with a suspension, Mayhem Miller talks burglary charges, and we have an update on Eddie Yagen's brain injury. Our MMA panel will join us to review these newsmakers and more, so let's get to them. Another fighter finds himself suspended for using drugs. This time it's Tiago Silva. The UFC released a statement revealing that Silva tested positive for marijuana metabolites after UFC on Fuel TV in Macau where he submitted Stanislav Nedkov. Silva will be suspended for six months and has to participate in a drug rehabilitation program. Charges against Jason Mayhem Miller have been dropped. In August, Miller was arrested on burglary charges for allegedly breaking into a church and trashing it, but the case has been dropped in the Orange County Superior Court and the incident is removed from Miller's record, so now he can move on to something else. Former Strikeforce light heavyweight champion Gegard Mousasi says it won't be long until we see him fighting for the UFC, but he can't say when or where. He's already called out Mauricio Shogun Hua, but before that happens, Mike Kyle claims that he and Mousasi will meet at the next Strikeforce event. And last week, we told you that Eddie Yagen had admitted himself to the hospital with swelling on his brain after a regular training session. After three days of obser observation, Yagen was released from the hospital, and now he says that he'll be taking a six-month layoff from fighting. He was supposed to face Dennis Seaver at UFC on Fox in December, but now Nam Fan will be filling in for him. That is the latest news from the MMA world. Let's take it over to our MMA panel, John Pollock and John Ramdeen. And guys, it seems like this is a good choice for Eddie Yagen to be taking six months off, but then he takes a pay cut as well. Uh, absolutely, and that's something that I'm glad to see, and I hope this does become a trend where guys do uh, acknowledge head injuries especially, John, is something that you really do get worried about, pay or no pay. And so often, it's a, you, know, you hear about these medical suspensions after a fight, we both know that these medical suspensions, they're not enforced, and a lot of guys, they're back in the gym a week later. Yeah, I, I agree, and I wouldn't be surprised if Eddie Yagen is one of them. The difference between major sports like the NFL or the NHL is that they have an or a big organization behind them where when it comes to the UFC, these guys are almost independent contractors. So if you're not fighting, you're not getting paid. So I would not be surprised if that six months for Eddie Yagen becomes three or less. Yeah, it could very well be the case. Uh, Tiago Silva, let's chat about this man. Unbelievable that this guy here gets popped for pot. He is now going to be sent to rehab by the UFC. I don't understand this man. This guy has completely curtailed any momentum in his career now with the Brandon Barrow win, with Stanislav Nedkov. I mean, is this guy, I don't understand this at all. I just don't understand the rule. It wasn't marijuana, it was a marijuana metabolite, which means he could have smoked marijuana 30 days before his matchup. So if it was day 27 and him and his buddies decided to smoke a gagger, well, he just screwed himself out of a victory and, uh, you and know, his purse. And his purse. So it, it doesn't make sense. But I think the whole rule should be amended. I think we've talked about it a number of times. It really doesn't make sense. But to, to that end, that rule is still in place right now. And if I were to tell you, John, that 30 days from now, I am going to give you $50,000. And all you have to do for that 50 grand is not smoke a joint and you can't withstand marijuana for that time period, I would argue you have a bit of an issue then. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it's irresponsible, especially if he wants to, you know, make the most of his mixed martial arts career. You talk about momentum. This guy is still considered one of the top top 10 guys in the light heavyweight division and all it takes is a couple of big victories and he could find himself fighting John Jones for the light heavyweight championship of the world. So I think it's just very irresponsible of Tiago Silva and maybe more importantly uh, irresponsible for his coaches around him because you know some of the, quite frankly some of these guys need guidance and uh, I think uh, Tiago Silva is his own worst enemy. I, I, I'm completely with you. I understand the coaching argument but at the end of the day these are adults here and you have to understand what you are doing here. Can't monitor a guy. True, but Junie Browning was also one. Fair adult. enough. Fair enough. Junie Browning certainly the exception to the rule of someone that did need a babysitter. Now, John, I, I know the mustache is uh, growing out prominently here. You are going to be cornering our own Robin Black on November 30th, meaning lots of people are going to be exposed to this mustache. So we're just a week out from this fight. Will the mustache be making its way to Montreal? Yeah, I, I believe so. It's giving me energy. It's almost like Samson in his hair. So uh, I think. 
I, I'm going to give Robin some positive energy with this killer mustache. And don't forget, you can go online, donate. It's for Movember. Movember, it's for a very good cause, men's health. This coming weekend, of course, we've got uh, Jordan Meehan taking on Forest Pets. Bellator is coming up on Friday night. But uh, then there's quite a bit of a lull, really. We, we're Until December 8th, there really isn't any major MMA. Yeah, one of the big things, though, is Gegard Mousasi talking about his return to mixed martial arts. He takes on Mike Kyle in January. This guy has looked phenomenal over his career. Very impressive. Uh, the guy does not get rattled. And hopefully in January, we're going to see a new Gegard Mousasi. Uh, he said that that fight with King Mo, where King Mo used his wrestling skills to hold him down and get the unanimous decision victory was an eye-opener for him. He says he had to go back to the drawing board. Of course, he had that knee injury that he had to uh, rehab. On top of that, working on his ground skills, and he knows he's going to make it into the UFC, especially now that Strike Force is going Maybe to this fall. fight can be for one night for the vacant light heavyweight title. Let's let's send this promotion off with a light heavyweight champion. Sure, but I mean, yes, I, I think why not? I mean, Strike Force has done crazy that things. That should be in the Strike past. Force's motto for the next month. <laughs> why not? Why not do this? Let's get Butterbean for this last fight in Oklahoma City. Why not? Yeah, it makes sense. Bring it. Genki Sudo. <laughs> Sarah, you'd love to see Butterbean Genki Sudo again, wouldn't you? No, no, no. No Butterbean. Why not? No. I'm just not into Butterbean. I'm more into this iPhone app. Oh. Fight Network's segue. iPhone app. Okay, so when you're not watching Fight Network, even though we expect you to watch 24-7, we realize you do have a life. So we've created an iPhone app that you can use to stay up to speed on the latest news from the combat sports world. Just search Fight Network in your app store, download, Get reading, get watching, it's easy peasy. All right, coming up next, find out how you can win an exclusive Hitman Absolution giveaway.